Maggie's phone had gone dead, so she had no clue what time it was. Judging by the ache in her muscles, she'd guessed they'd been hiking for two days. But since it wasn't dark yet, common sense told her they'd only been walking for a few hours. Funny, she thought wryly. Since she'd spend more than six hours at a mall or department store without ever receiving a single blister, but currently she could feel one forming on the back of her left heel. They approached a stream. It was only about a hundred feet wide, but stretched in either direction as far as the eye could see. We'll take a break soon. First, we need to cross here. What? But the trail doesn't lead... I didn't think you'd slow us down as much as you have. I know a shortcut to get us to the spot where we're going to camp for tonight. If we don't take it, we'll never make it before dark. That's a small river. Yep. He'd slid Maggie's sack from her back. Holding their backpacks over his head, he sloshed into the stream. You coming? He didn't wait for her answer before he tossed his boots and the backpacks to shore on the other side and dunked under the water. This will be our only chance to clean up. You do bathe, huh? Of course. I just prefer to bask under a swivel shower head set to pulse. The sensation on my breasts is borderline euphoric. <sighs> I don't want to know about your lady bits. He dived under again. This time resurfacing with a handful of oozing green seaweed in his fist. All natural body wash. Good for the skin, full of <laughs> minerals and vitamins. I've never seen pond algae in a bed bath and beyond. And who the heck says lady bits? How old are you? 70? Get the fuck in the water before I throw you over my shoulder and dunk you and your lady bits. Ugh, I'm just trying to keep things light. God, you have a short fuse. Woman, you have no idea. Just as Cam had, she tucked her socks into her boots and held them high. She stepped into the water. Mud squeezed between her toes. Slimy. Cold. Disgusting. Shit brown was not her color. A substance like sticky wet lace greased the bottom of her foot. Lace was never supposed to be sticky. Ugh! I'll just sponge bathe with some of the water I packed. That is to drink, not bathe in. Here, take my hand. <laughs> Ugh, I do not have the patience for your shit. He slung her over his shoulder, like a bartender would a dish rag. Bastard, fucking put me down! You won't have to touch the bottom. He grabbed the boots from her hand, chucking them onto the shore next to the backpacks. With a hand under her back, he balanced her on the surface. The ring that draped from the chain necklace around his neck glimmered in the fading sunlight. The dark wet stubble on his chin now appeared much softer. Sure, she wanted to screw him till the morning light rose, but she had vowed long ago never to let herself get close to a man. Friends with benefits, was truly all she wanted. Nothing emotional. No drama. But when he twirled a lock of her hair around his fingers, she involuntarily sighed. She pictured his large hands caressing her breasts, his body over hers, his cock. You a natural redhead. Cam, kiss me. If you tell me your secret. I don't have any secrets. The day we met, Jag said you were seeking something. What was he talking about? Jags doesn't lie, so don't bullshit me. She had no clue, and even if she had, she would never tell him shit. She hardly knew him, never mind trusted him. He could as easily murder her out here as he could fuck her. 
With a tenderness someone of his size should not possess, he ran the back of his hand down the side of her face. Your skin, so soft. Those dark eyes pierced hers for only a moment before he snapped his hand away. With her cradled in his arms, he sloshed onto shore and set her on her bare feet. Men were simple creatures. Sports, friends, and hobbies were all great. But all they really needed was sex and food. A theory that had helped her manipulate every man she'd encountered since damn near puberty. Not a man existed she couldn't seduce. Until now. He was obviously attracted to her, but maybe he trusted women about as much as she trusted men. Any sane woman would run from a man who threatened to squash her like a bug. With a squeeze of his hand, he could break her neck, silencing the sounds of her own screams. Screams that haunted her waking and sleeping consciousness. But his threats and sighs didn't scare her. She wanted to trust him. And that terrified her, almost as much as the memories of that terrible night so long ago. <sighs> Time to go.